In this video, I'm going to explain the differences between a certified registered nurse anesthetist or CRNA and a physician anesthesiologist. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about what are the main differences between a certified registered nurse anesthetist or CRNA and a physician anesthesiologist. Some of them might be obvious, but I wanna kind of break it down for many. A lot of questions have been coming up in the comments about the differences in time it takes for schooling, training, the responsibilities on a day-to-day -day basis, what are the salary differences, and what's the lifestyle difference overall. So we're gonna talk about all of that and a little bit more. Also, I wanted to mention the anesthesia assistant role and what that means and what plays into the process of becoming one of those types of anesthesia providers. So let's get into it. Well, I'll start off with the thing I know the best, which is being a physician anesthesiologist. So as many of you guys who watch my channel know, I've been practicing anesthesia in an academic setting for about four and a half years. This is my fifth year of being an attending. So in that time, I've learned a lot. I do want to break down a little bit more in depth what the responsibilities are on a day-to-day -day basis for a physician anesthesiologist. My last video touched upon the schooling aspect and the training aspect. So we'll get into more of what I do every day. As far as the schooling aspect, you all know it's 12 years in total after high school. So four years of college, four years of medical school, and four years of residence. And then I can do an additional one year of training in a subspecialty area as a fellowship. And that can be in pediatrics, cardiac anesthesia, thoracic anesthesia, obstetric anesthesia, or pain or chronic pain. So those are the areas of training. And as you can imagine, those can be a total of about 13 years if we do the fellowship extra year. So that extra year of fellowship training can really bump up your salary. The average bump up is about 30 to 50,000 depending on where you live and that's really important. It depends on where you live. So to become a certified registered nurse anesthetist, it will take you four years of undergrad training in which you'll obtain your bachelor's of science and become a registered nurse after you take your licensing exam. And then after that, you'll go forward to a practice and you're gonna be practicing in a critical care setting such as an ICU and you'll have to do that for the minimum of one year. And then after you've entered the workforce unfortunately you'll have to come out and start going back into education again and so you'll do training and clinical and educational experience and that will be about 24 to 30 months um, it depends on the program so I looked on the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists website and the average they said for training is about 24 up to um, even 51 months they said and that depends on different universities so specifically, we get a lot of student nurse anesthetists from Columbia University that come to my hospital for trainings in pediatrics and cardiac. They come to kind of work with both our nurse anesthetists and our physician anesthesiologist in the OR. Most of them are there for just a few months. And so that's part of the clinical aspect of the training that follows your education. So you're in the classroom, it's a full-time thing, so you're gonna be learning and doing clinical. So I don't think it's really common or even quite possible for you to work at the same time as you're going through your nurse anesthetist training. Same thing goes for medical school. Like most people didn't really have a job while they're in medical school. It's a full-time thing. The nurse anesthetist program in Fairfield, Connecticut um, is actually going to take you about 36 months and you'll pay about 75 to 80k per year. So again, that's going to be you know, a full-time thing that you're doing, the training, um, you're not going to be able to work. So you have to think about that part of it, you know, taking out loans and being able to financially cover that. So in comparison, medical school is four years, as we said, but you have a lot more um, intuition that you're going to be responsible for. So on average, medical school will cost you around two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars for four years of training. So those are the loans and things that you have to pay back or, you know, if you're lucky and really intelligent, you can get a scholarship to make it through. So those are things to consider when you're trying to make a decision between the two fields. Again, you're not going to be able to make any money as an employee during this time. So after all of that, like numbers talk, 
stuck and you know it's really heavy you have to think about you know the benefits that you're going to gain after you're done with your training so you know that you're gonna devote a lot of years in either case to learning how to be an anesthesiologist or a nurse anesthetist and to take care of patients safely and effectively and that's a rewarding thing so at the end of your training you'll be able to benefit from those great rewards in regards to um, you know fulfillment and life fulfillment so the responsibilities certified nurse anesthetists CRNAs do complete daily uh, patient assessments they do preoperative assessments prior to patients undergoing anesthesia and they educate the patients about what their surgery and recovery will be like they administer medication through a variety of methods they monitor the patient's vitals and anesthesia during the surgery modulating the dose based on what's going on and they make changes as needed and they also oversee the patient's safety during anesthesia recovery in New York State, the recovery period is also monitored by a different set of nurses um, generally, but we will be working with other medical staff to develop pain management programs. So let's talk about the difference in lifestyle. So lifestyle is like the hot topic. Everybody wants to know what is the benefit of becoming a CRNA or a physician anesthesiologist as far as lifestyle goes. You know, am I gonna have extra free time if I do one or the other? What does that all mean? So speaking from my experience as a physician anesthesiologist, I work in an academic center. I work five days a week generally and I do take calls, which are um, for me mostly late calls, so I spend a little extra time on the evening end. And then every now and again, I'm assigned overnight calls. And every now and again is probably on average about two to three times per month. So that's the general schedule of someone like me who does general anesthesiology, not subspecialty. So if you're looking at that, that's gonna average out to about, I would say a 50 hour work week, depending on you know how late you stay for call and, and how um, the schedule for the OR is on a given you know part of the year. So it can range between 50, I would say on average about 55, 50 to 55 hours per week. For a day-to-day -day hourly thing, it's about, I come in at seven 7 a.m. in the morning and then I usually leave around 5 p.m. so a 10 hour day so 10 hours a day five days a week there's are 50 hours and then if I stay late for call a few hours on each day that I'm on call that adds on a little extra so let's say 55 to 60 hour work week and then if there's a week where you're out you have overnight call then some of those calls are 24 hours so a 24 hour call you know let's say twice a month so add another 48 hours to your regular 50 hour work week or so so there can be a lot of time spent in the hospital as a physician anesthesiologist in an academic setting other settings that you can look at of course you know if you work in a surgery center in a private practice setting usually you're spending um, your days may be a little shorter and you may not have to do on any overnight shifts or any nights or, or weekends it just depends on where you work those are things that are flexible and the great thing about anesthesiology is that the flexibility is there so that you can make your lifestyle what you want it to be so if you want to spend extra time make that extra money totally open for that many opportunities for that but if you want to work a little less say you want to do part-time and you want to work less than five days a week no nights no weekends definitely there are tracks and shifts that are available for that too it just all depends on what you want and you can make your own schedule so I think that's the great part about the specialty so those are the major differences in the time that you spend at the hospital and your lifestyle so I think for me, a lot of people ask me this, nurse anesthetists have a great opportunity for a, a really balanced lifestyle. They can um, you know, work full time, like I said, three days a week and do 12 to 13 hour shifts at a time. And then they have four days to themselves, which is great. And I can only imagine what I would do with all that time. Okay, so finally, I wanna to talk to you guys about the role of the anesthesiologist assistant. So this is another way to practice anesthesia. And um, the major difference is in the training and the roles and responsibilities. Those are the major differences. So anesthesiologist assistants usually, four years of undergrad, they obtain a bachelor's of science and they have to do it in a pre-medical track because they're um, after their graduation they're required to have taken the GRE or the MCAT so they have to take those exams in order to apply for the program it's a master's degree program the program is usually about 24 to 28 months on average and during that time you're doing clinical training as well as educational foundations in anesthesia 
So most of the time you're being trained by one of the members of the anesthesia care team, be it a physician anesthesiologist, a resident anesthesiologist, or a certified nurse anesthetist. So you'll be getting all of the clinical training from people who are either finished with their training or going through it as well. And what they usually do is they work under the supervision of the physician anesthesiologist and they're constantly being supervised throughout the anesthetic. So they're going to go alongside with whatever plan is in place and to help to administer the anesthetic. So for example, they'll do the preoperative anesthesia evaluation. The physician anesthesiologist will um, sign off on it and evaluate and approve the patient for anesthesia. And, and then after that, the anesthesiologist assistant will be in the OR administering drug, helping with the induction, which is the part where people go off to sleep, and um, the maintenance of anesthesia. I think that their role is very much useful in critical care settings, I can see that being a great utility. You know, having um, someone there that can help with management of a very sick patient, a trauma patient, someone who's going through a complex cardiac surgery. Anesthesiologist assistance would be really great in those settings and really, really helpful. So in New York, specifically, in the part of New York that I practice in, um, we don't actually have anesthesiologist assistance in our healthcare model, but I can see, you know, maybe in other parts of the country where there's a little bit less access to healthcare or physicians are more rare in number, then I can see an anesthesiologist assistant being a really useful asset to the healthcare team and um, pretty much being essential. What's the salary? It's an hourly rate for most um, compensation packages. So it's around $80 an hour. Um, which averages out of about 100k to 160k per year. So it just depends on where you are in the country. But that is a great alternative for I think many people, depending on your lifestyle and your desires, you will be able to become an anesthesiologist assistant in six years. So you'll do your four years of undergrad and then about two years of master's postgraduate training. Okay, so that is in a nutshell all of the different tracks um, that you can take to having a career in anesthesia. I personally would just recommend you following whatever track, whatever lifestyle goal um, that you have um, that fits your financial and um, personal you know, aspirations. So I wish everyone the best in their pursuit. And if you have any further questions on any of these tracks, please do comment below with those questions. And I cannot stress enough, you know, the great joy that I get from delivering anesthesia every day and doing what I do. So I hope that those out there that share the same desires and the same passion about the field of anesthesia, push forward and go for your dreams. You will not regret it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, please be safe. Please take care of yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.